The internet has changed the scale at which people and machines can collaborate. Before the internet, most collaborators had to be close by to work together. Now the cost of collaborating with anybody anywhere in the world has been reduced to almost zero. New global systems, almost like a global brain, are now routinely able to solve problems, combining the communication and number crunching capabilities of computer systems with the creativity and high-level cognitive capabilities of people. Just consider the wealth of information gathered by the Wikipedia. The galaxies discovered by Galaxy Zoo. Or the reams of OCR tasks solved by ReCapture. And all this is supercharged by the emergent generativity and robust evaluation that can come from the many eyes of large crowds of people. We still only poorly understand, however, how to program this global brain. We have some stunning success stories, but most applications still fail and require adaptive experimentation and lots of trying out in order to achieve the success they want to have. And since programming the global brain involves people, this is vastly different than programming computers. Unlike computers, people are self-interested and therefore require carefully designed incentives. Anything from money, fame, and fun to altruism and community to perform tasks and prevent them from gaming the system or causing outright damage. In addition, people vary across many dimensions in the kinds of tasks they can do well. This implies qualitative differences in how we can expect to match tasks and resources in a global brain context. People, in contrast to computers, are prone to a bewildering and wide variety of idiosyncratic errors. Programming the global brain therefore calls for quality assurance mechanisms geared towards these errors, maybe involving previously unthinkable involvement of other humans. How can we effectively program a global brain? We believe that a fundamental requirement is developing powerful new programming metaphors based on both social and computational processes, rather than traditional computing, that more accurately reflect the ways people and computers can work together in the global brain. Conventional programming languages are out of necessity prescriptive and describe the task in exhaustive detail. When humans are involved, this might not be appropriate. Actually, when we program the global brain, we might need to support a specificity frontier of different levels of specification for a program. On one end are workflows that describe the microtasks as closely as possible such that humans are still willing to follow them. Somewhere in the middle will be a set of constraints that humans will have to weave their way through in order to achieve their goals. At the far, far end, we will have mere goal descriptions and people will have to find their way to these goals individually. Additionally, we need to extend the range of extractions available. Complementing the traditional loops, forks, and recursion, the programming language for the global brain will have to add abstractions for group decision processes, contests, and collaborative work. To address these challenges, Patrick Minder, a PhD student from the Department of Informatics of the University of Zurich, has developed the novel human computation programming language, Crowdlang. This adaptive programming language and framework allows to quickly test a large variety of different algorithms, incorporating both humans and machines, in order to discover the best Crowdlang program. For example, to translate a book from German into English at a high quality, 
the program first divides the text into its constituting sentences. Then the program translates the whole text using a machine translation tool such as Google Translate. Obviously, the quality of the resulting text is not satisfactory. To address this shortcoming, each sentence is presented to a number of monolingual participants who improve the sentence's wording. Then another set of people gets to vote on the best version of the improved sentences. In a third step, Crowdlang automatically combines the sentences into paragraphs, each of which again gets improved by human crowd workers in terms of fluency to guarantee consistent wording and fluent paragraph transitions, followed by a selection of the best version. Last but not least, the corrected paragraphs get assessed in terms of grammatical correctness by a set of crowd workers and spell checking software. The resulting Crowdlang translations are not perfect, but within four hours we were able to translate a whole book for about $70. And professional translators told us that the result was actually quite good and conveyed all of the original content. Indeed, they added that the result represented about 90% of the professional translation work. We are confident that using the Crowdlang platform, we will be able to further improve the translations and approximate a high quality professional translation. What is important to remember in this whole process is that Crowdlang is not a platform focused for translations. It is much more a general purpose programming language for the global brain, which we will use in other applications and is applicable to all imaginable application areas. Our world is faced with both existential threats of unprecedented seriousness and huge opportunities. We believe that our ability to face the threats and opportunities of the coming century will be profoundly affected by how well and soon we can master the art of programming our planet's emerging global brains.